because sometimes they feel uh, excluded and sometimes with the issues of uh, uh, disabilities some communities and sometimes so many people uh, exclude these children from so many things and uh, one is that uh, there is question of stigma of uh, the situation in which they are in and sometimes even ourselves as policy makers we do not sometimes ensure that we provide an equal opportunity for all our children. In some circumstances these kids feel left out and uh, we have to make sure that that does not happen. In this country we have uh, f invested in this subsector, I say that all our resources on infrastructure, 25% of it, we channel it to schools that handle our children with special needs. When we do capitation, we do top-ups, uh, so that uh, in our secondary school we do a top-up of uh, uh, 37,000 for every learner with special needs. In our primary school, we do a top-up of 2,300. And uh, we give a pudding component of around of 11,000. There is also some grants which we give for them to be able to meet the cost of staff who work for these children in that school environment. So it is so important that uh, every time that uh, we do policies on our children, we have to bear in mind that there are children who have been gifted differently. And therefore, when we are making policies, we ensure that those policies take care of all of us. Yeah. What's the main challenge? It's the whole question of inclusion and inclusivity because uh, that is the real thing today that uh, we say education is the biggest equalizer and we can only ensure that it is for sure the biggest equalizer if we are giving everybody an equal chance notwithstanding the circumstances of a child so we must not leave anybody behind we must ensure that everybody's potential is nurtured. And that is what we are uh, discussing here today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have some questions. Personally, I have a question. Uh, you see that uh, innovation and ICT has enabled education to be a little bit easier and more accessible. Uh, what are we doing to ensure that children with special needs and access devices. <laughs> inclusive environments for all children um, despite their disabilities or abilities so that they can all belong in school and feel an, as part and parcel of the education system. Um, the biggest challenge is that most of the teachers in the schools are not necessarily trained to identify children that need specialized support to be able to belong in the school and feel as part of the school system. So we need to work with the governments to really invest in um, training and building the capacities of teachers at the school level to actually be able to screen and identify children that might need support but also look at other inclusion aspects including some things such as girls that also need special support to be um, in schools and to perform at their expected levels. We've had a couple of meetings, but of course in collaboration with uh, different partners because inclusion in schools, inclusion in education systems is a critical topic because there are so many children that are being left out of the school system because it is not 
um, catering for their needs um, so that they can actually feel their belonging in those particular schools. So we've had um, conferences at country level, conferences at the regional level, even at the global level like um, this particular one to talk about these issues and to share some solutions but as well as um, learning from each other in, from countries that are actually doing better uh, so that they can also support others to learn and be able to implement similar strategies to really create conducive learning environments for all children. <laughs> Um, it is critical that governments take this issue uh, seriously at the as they look at education reform, ensuring that there's investment in terms of uh, financial resources, but also human resources in terms of the teachers and school administrators that have the capacity to be able to look at these strategies within education systems and support them to ensure that they actually cater for every child. So really it's about investment, it's about screening, it's about involving communities even at the school level, but also having teachers and school administrators advisor um, sub-Saharan Africa for English and School Education for the British Council. Um, based in Ghana and I work with different teams across sub-Saharan Africa and we're here in Kenya for the inclusion um, conference and we've been having really interesting discussions around inclusion. Um, we've talked about um, language for resilience in Uganda um, this is one of the British Council projects. We work closely with another partner, Vindal International, and they're helping us with the delivery of the, um, of the program. And we had a really um, fruitful discussion. We presented our work, and also there have been a lot of questions about what we've been doing and a lot of input as well. Um, we've just heard from another um, colleague around gender inclusion as well, and we've got other workshops going on, and um, that's all talking about gender inclusion and leading learning for gender equality, for example, and we'll be talking about inclusion of disability in the coming days and coming workshops as well. Um, yeah, and so uh, in, because you've talked about uh, in terms of inclusions, who are you planning to include in this kind of uh, project? So, one of the reasons we're all together here is to talk about how we can um, mainstream equality, diversity, and inclusion in general in terms of gender equality, in terms of disability inclusion, and it's in terms of um, refugee students um, in refugee settlements as well. Um, so the discussions are like, we're presenting what we've been doing, all the projects we've been working on, and um, this is a networking opportunity to kind of get together, discuss our ideas, our programs, projects, and our plans for the future. And um, hopefully this this is the policy dialogue and we would like to take everything further um, and improve our work around inclusion. And also uh, the, the Ministry was here, the Ministry of Education. Why including the Ministry of Education? Because it's really important to have the um, Ministry of Education involved in these dialogues because um, especially at the level of policy as well as implementation of the projects and programs we're running, um, we need to work together. It's not something um, it should come externally, we need to work together to implement um, our um, plans and our projects and it's not it's, it's co-creation. We need to discuss what is needed and how we can um, take the experience as well. Is there any money that is needed there? Is there? Through this project, will you be including money? Is there a budget for and it's how much? Well, I mean, there's, there are so many different projects we've been talking about and uh, we, we do work with the funding coming from different um, organizations and different um, from places, so yes, funding is involved, otherwise, we won't be able to implement any of these things. So, so maybe you can tell uh, your, your summary as a uh, British Council what's your message after this conference? What has the 
What's the important that we bring people together to share some of those challenges and to talk about solutions and ways of working that can make our schools more inclusive. What are some of the gaps that you would like to be fixed in this country? So we know that there are particular challenges around um, the inclusion of children with special educational needs and disabilities. We know we have particular challenges around the inclusion of girls. Uh, in some particular places and we also know that sometimes um, the language of, uh, of instruction um, can be a challenge for certain children who maybe have moved into a country where they don't speak uh, the home language of that particular country. So those are three groups of young people that we're thinking about particularly at the moment. What are some of the main policies in your country that have in England, in England, I suppose we have a commitment, as do many countries, to ensuring that all uh, young people with special needs and, uh, and, and disabilities are um, given the appropriate levels of education. So we um, have a system where some children, the majority of children, go to mainstream schools along with their peers, but we do have some schools that are set up for children with very significant disabilities, uh, where they have access to different sorts of resources, specially trained teachers, maybe special resources. Um, for example, in my, in my schools, uh, we're very lucky that we have um, some access to uh, therapists, so physiotherapists, occupational therapists, uh, speech and language therapists, who can give input to those young people in order to try uh, and support them to be able to engage and access their education successfully. What's my... My message to them, my message is that I think that inclusive education is, is very challenging, but that it has to be a priority. That when he first came to the school, he, he showed me this wonderful hall that they had at the school, and he said, I just want to show you this hall, he said, because it's my hall of shame. And he said, because...